In Creo Parametric, you can use the GDNT Advisor from Sigmetrics as a guide for creating your geometric tolerances in a part or an assembly. Before I jump into the advisor though, I'm going to do a couple of different things. First off, I'm going to access my model properties. You can normally get to it from the file prepare command, but I access it so often that I have it in my quick access toolbar. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this dialog box where we have our detailing section. And right now the tolerancing standard is set to 2009. I will click on the change button and then we can use this drop down list to change to 2018. In a moment, you will see why I did that. And now we can close the model properties dialog box. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the annotate tab and then click on the new button to create a new combination state. Let's right click on the combination state in order to rename it. And I'm going to call it five set datums to match what I use in my standard start parts. And now we can jump into the GTNT advisor, which you can get to from the applications tab. Then we'll click on this command and we will get into the interface. If you take a look at the bottom left hand corner of the graphics area, we automatically got a few different notes that were generated for us. There are five different parts of the GDNT advisor interface. First off, we have our ribbon and you can see a variety of different commands. Second, we have a tab in the navigator for the GDNT advisor. If you wanted to, you could switch back over to the model tree, but let's click on the tab again. In the tab, we have our feature tree. You'll see this get populated in a moment. Then we have the advisor tree. We're already getting a couple of different warnings inside of here. Hey, not all the degrees of freedom of the design model are constrained. No kidding. I just got into GD and T advisor and some surfaces are not constrained. For the fifth part of the interface, I will click on the show hide constraint state command and then we'll get a little legend down at the bottom. You'll also notice that the model surfaces change color to correspond to the legend. Right now, everything is showing up in a gray color because everything is unconstrained. Now, in order to start generating our geometric tolerances, I will use the command in the upper left-hand corner of the ribbon, the tolerance feature command. And when I click on that, in the message area, I'm being prompted to select one or more surfaces. In the upper right hand corner, we have a select dialog box, but I just need to pick the surface that I want to use, which will be this front surface in the model. And we get a little dialog box for add feature. There is a drop down list where it'll recognize what kind of feature it or surface it is. In this case here, it's a planar surface. The other choice is slab. I think there are about eight different choices depending on what you pick, but everything is good in here. Let's click the OK button and that will open up the ribbon for the tolerance feature. It gives a name for the feature, planar surface one in this case. You can change that. There is a drop down list for changing the scheme, but I'm happy with geometric tolerance and it is automatically suggesting to use a flatness condition for the surface. If I go to the drop down list, you can see that the only ones that are available are flatness and profile of a surface. Flatness has an asterisk next to it, indicating that this is the one that is suggested. And then for the tolerance value, let's enter in, I'm just going to use 0.01 in here for everything. Also, it's automatically suggesting that I create a datum feature for this reference. You could choose a different letter, but I am happy with this one. And then you can cancel out or you could hit the check mark. This one allows you to build this feature in the model and then add another one. I'm going to hit the check mark just to show you that some changes happened inside of here. So first off in the feature tree, here you can see planar surface one and we have our planar datum and our flatness condition and it starts building our datum reference frame. It gives us a warning here that 
the DRF is not being referenced. Anyhow, that is good. Oh yeah, also in the graphics area, you can see the 3D note that was created and you can click on it and move it around if I want it to appear over here. And I can grab where the leader is attached to the surface and change that as well. And the surface is showing up in green because it is fully constrained. Now let's go about defining our second datum feature. Let's go to the tolerance feature command. And this time I will select one of the cylindrical surfaces inside of the middle of the part. It automatically grabbed the other half of the cylinder. It is recognizing this as a simple hole. That is the only choice. Let's click the OK button. And right now we are getting some suggestions in here for our position tolerance. If you click on the dimension, you can change the values. So for example, I think that, hey, for what I'm working on, three decimal places is too much. And then let's change the value for the tolerance to 0.01. And there are other options in this case for independency and statistical tolerance. I'm not going to check either of those two. Let's click the OK button. And then it is suggesting to us a perpendicularity tolerance. I am happy with that one. Let's enter in a value here. Let's go, I'm going to use 0.01. And then we have another question mark in yellow for the material modifier. And so you could use the maximum material boundary condition or the least material boundary condition or regardless of feature size. And if I wanted to, in this case, I could probably add something else, but this is good for this one. It's going to generate a datum feature using the letter B. I am happy with that one. And this time, just to be a little different, I'm going to use the little sort of like swirl icon in order to accept and add another feature. And so it created it in the model. You can see it's like right in there. I'll move it in a moment so it's a little more visible after I create my third feature. And so I've got my little dialog box indicating that I can select another reference. Let's select this top surface and I will click the OK button in order to accept that. Here it is suggesting that I use a surface profile. I'm happy with that. Once again, I'm just going to plug in the same value for everything. But in this particular situation, I want to add a, another condition. So I can click on this little flyout and add the second condition. This time I'll use perpendicularity. Once again, I'm going to enter in for the value. Oops, might have to click in the little cell in order to activate it, 0.01. And here we have our different references that we can use. So in this case, I want that surface perpendicular. And eh, let's just do perpendicular to A, it's more like parallel to the B reference, but it is using A and B for the surface profile. We are generating a datum feature once again. This time we are using C, and I will use the check mark in order to complete that one. And that surface now is highlighted in green as well, and you can see the note that was generated. I do have that one note that's sort of sitting in the middle of the model. I'm going to use my selection filter in the lower right hand corner in order to change the annotation. Just makes it a little easier for me to grab it and then drag it and then position it where I want it to be. And so that way I have my different geometric tolerances, my different datum features generated for starting off the geometric dimensioning tolerancing of this model. Now let's grab this one, just move a little bit away from the other one, just so that they're not overlapping when I'm looking at them. So that's how you can get started in the GD&T Advisor. I'm going to click the close button in order to go back to standard part mode. I do have my different annotations visible on the five set datums combination state. If I go to default all, well, they're still visible in here, so I can click on them. And from the mini toolbar, choose to remove these ones that I don't want to appear in default all. I kind of like having default all appear 
empty and clean. So I'm just going to select the other ones and remove them. There we go, the last one. But I go back to my set datums combination state, and there you see both the flat to screen notes as well as my geometric tolerances. So that's how you can get started with the GDT advisor. One last thing I forgot to mention, I am getting a warning in the advisor tree that the orientation tolerance must be smaller than the location tolerance. So let's go to our planar surface two, which has the perpendicularity. I will right click and choose to edit. And then let's change the value for the perpendicularity. Let's change this to 0.05 and then hit the check mark. And that gets rid of that warning.